The Eve of Waterloo by Lord Byron. This is a small extract pulled up from a bigger play written by Byron, The Childhood's Prim uh, Pilgrimage. In this poem, uh, the poet is trying to actually explain an evening before uh, the war was on set. P the soldiers were enjoying one evening, one fine evening with all the people and their wives in one single room in the chief lieutenant's place. All of a sudden, they get to hear two bomb blasts. Eventually, they realize it was attack from the French army. Let's have a look at the summary. Now, <clears throat> a ball. All the soldiers were together enjoying the ball with their uh, seniors, with all the soldiers, one night before the onset of a war. A sound of artillery hits. Now, a sound of artillery eventually hits in Belgium, the capital, Brussels, right? And eventually what happens is that they finally realize it is an onshot, a, de a delay of attack from the French army. A terrible confusion. A terrible confusion is seen all around the ball because people were enjoying good moments, happy, lovely moments with their wives, with their loved ones and their family. But all of a sudden, eventually, a terrible attack hits the ball place and they rush on knights with armors and behind horses. War Song of Cameron. Eventually, War Song of Cameron is also sung during the poem and Red Burial. The poet tries to explain in the due end of this poem that the people, there is no difference between men, women, animal and the world around. Eventually, everybody who has died will be buried to the earth in the happiness. Now, moving on, we'll ha have a look at the explanation. The Eve of Waterloo by Lord Byron is a narrative poem, exciting as well as full of pathos. The poem is based on a true incident that happened just before the Battle of Waterloo. The battle took place in June 1815 in Waterloo, a village about 11 miles from Brussels, where the Duke of Wellington defeated his famous French rival, Napoleon. Napoleon was sent to exile and imprisonment. When Napoleon was advancing towards Brussels, the Duke of Wellington was with his officers attending a ball thrown by Charlotte, the Duchess of Richmond. Now this story is all about a particular battle named the Battle of Waterloo which took place in June 1815 in a village in Waterloo, that is a village 11 miles away from Brussels. Brussels is the capital of Belgium at that point of time. Now, during this war, uh, Napoleon was defeated by uh, Duke Wellington and was sent to exile forever. Moving on, stanza 1. The poem, The Eve of Waterloo, begins with a night scene, the eve of the battle. Now, the eve of the battle or eve of Waterloo is an evening before something or an event has occurred. So, the sound of revelry echoes in large ba ballrooms of Brussels, the capital of Belgium. The English officers and their ladies are seen dancing to the tune of music, which is being played. The ballroom was dazzling with the glow of bright lamps. Everybody present there was in a happy mood. As the volume of the music increased, the couples dancing started to exchange expressions of love through their glances. As the celebrations advanced, like a wedding ceremony, they heard a sound of cannon fire similar to the sound of church bell announcing a burial. Now, right in the beginning of the poem, the poet is trying to explain the good mood and the celebrations being taking place in the ballroom. Eventually, they hear, at the end of this paragraph, they hear a cannon fire hitting the ballroom. Moving on to the second stanza. The sound of the cannon fire was ignored in the beginning by everyone as they thought it was the sound of the wind or that of rattling car over the stony street. The people in the ballroom continued with their dances and enjoyed themselves without being disturbed until dawn. The poet has used personification here. Youth and pleasure have been personified. The poet says, when youth and pleasure meet, they seem to be dancing in such a way as if they are chasing time with the speed of their feet. All of a sudden, the sounds of the cannon are heard once again. The sounds are louder, clearer and deadlier than ever before. 
everybody was asked to arm themselves as the cannon fires began to roar. Now everybody was enjoying themselves in the ballroom and eventually uh, when the cannon fire had hit, they had first ignored the cannon fire thinking it to be the sound of the wind or to be the uh, sound of a car moving on the disturbed streets. Eventually another cannon fire was being balled off and then they realized that they have to arm themselves because it is the cannon fires have began to roar and it is eventually time to war. Stanza 3. The Duke of Burnswick, Frederick William, was the first to hear the sound amidst the celebrations. He could recognize from the tone that it was the sound of a cannon. The Duke understood that it was death knell for him. His father too was killed in a battle. It was the same sound that preceded his death. Thus, he was determined to take revenge upon his enemies by shedding the blood of his opponents. He is killed in the battlefield. Now, the Duke of Burnswick eventually hears the sound of the cannon first. He realizes that it was time for warfare and eventually it was the same kind of sound that by which his father was also killed. His father was also killed in a war and it was time for him also to take revenge with his enemies and get killed. The fourth stanza describes the confusion and the chaotic situation that takes place as the people are hurrying to and fro to prepare for the war. Now there is a sense of chaos and confusion in the ballroom. People are rushing from one place to another to prepare for the war. Women are sad because they are soon going to part with their partners. Their eyes are wet and they are trembling with fear. Due to the sudden parting, their cheeks have turned pale, which were blushing some time back. Before this, before the cannonballs were fired, the women were actually enjoying the party. Eventually, all of a sudden, they had to part ways with such a deep intrusion from their partners. So they eventually go pale and they start crying. <clears throat> The young people felt that their life was being taken away from them. The choking sighs might never be repeated. No one knew whether or not the men would return from the battle. They all wondered that how a night so full of love and happiness could give rise to such an awful and dreadful morning. Now, the poet has tried to show a huge transition of emotions from a complete ball of happiness, love and affection to a situation of chaos, revenge and ominous. Fifth stanza. The men quickly form their ranks. The soldiers and officers mount their horses and gather in large numbers and start moving towards their approaching enemies with great speed. The thundering sound of the enemy's guns is heard again and again. In the meantime, the city is woken up by the warning drums that are played early morning. The people assemble in groups, terrified. They whisper with pale lips to specify that French army had come. Now, all of a sudden, everybody had come to a state of action. Men had taken up their ranks, mounted on their horsebacks and gathered in large number and started moving towards the warfare. Now, the drums in the morning had been beaten and everybody had assembled there. Everybody was terrified and was talking with pale lips. The Camerons, a clan of Highlanders, play their war music. The wild and high notes of the bagpipers rise above all noise. It was often heard in the hills of Alban, a Gaelic name of Scotland. As the Camerons are playing their music, the Saxons are filled with fear. However, it puffed up the hearts of the Highland soldiers with inborn courage in a similar way as with their bagpipes were filled with their breath. In the seventh stanza, we find the army making their way through the forest of Ardens, the leaves on the trees waving above them as if they are shedding, te shedding tears over the heroes who found not, would not return home from the battlefield. The poet beautifully draws an image in the last line of this stanza. He says that the grass on which the army is treading will soon be covered with their corpses. The soldiers fighting the enemy would soon be cold and lifeless. Now here, um, the poet is trying to relate the natural phenomena with the warfares. 
the poet is trying to tell that when the army people are making way through the forest of Ardens, the leaves on the trees are waving them goodbye and shedding tears. This is a sign and amplification of natural phenomena relating to headness of war. The last stanza of the Eve of Waterloo makes a contrasting remark. The previous night, these same soldiers were full of life and they were vigorously dancing in the party. They were seen preparing and getting ready in their uniforms for the battle early morning. The dark clouds of the battle surrounded the soldiers. Finally, at the end of the day, we find the urn covered with the heap of dead bodies of sounds, thousands of men. The soldiers have lost their identity. The bodies of soldiers friends or enemies, horses or lay buried in one heap, covered in blood and soil, rider and horse, friend and foe, in one red burial blend. Now in the end, uh, the poet is trying to actually explain that whoever it is, rider or horse, friend or foe, in one red burial blend, everybody is down on earth to be given the last rites. That is all for the day. Uh, all the very best for your examinations.